Tony, there's, a, there's another photo that you've mentioned to me that you feel is important that we ought to talk about it, and that's the photo of the wedding, the three people in the center of the, uh, of the photo of a wedding. Tell me about that one. Uh, this photograph was taken uh, two years ago in uh, the town of Cordillero. Uh, and this is the wedding of uh, Mauricio, who is the young boy on the uh, left, his mother in the center, and uh, his bride, uh, Teresa, uh, who is uh, a local Indian. And, and it really s kind of pictorially tells the story of what has happened in Mexico. Um, the, they have, black men and black women have been intermarrying uh, mestizos and indios for 500 years. Just the other day, I was in the archives of the Natural History Museum at in Los Angeles, and uh, Bill Mason brought out and showed me the uh, marriage certificates of uh, the Angolan men and Angolan women who were married in the, in the National Cathedral of Mexico City back in the 1650s. What do you expect most people who um, see your exhibit of photographs to, to how do, what do they respond to, and what would you like them to respond to? Well, the gut reaction was like, I didn't know there were black people in Mexico. And then they say, these pictures are really beautiful. Um, what I would like for them also to go from there is to realize that uh, people of African descent and people of Mexican descent have had a relationship for a very long time. Uh, we are not strangers. We have been together these 500 plus years when we see each other now in the United States, if we have come together in increasing numbers, uh, as communities have changed, I think that we have to both look at one another uh, with compassion, try to look with understanding, and realize that we have much more in common than we have differences. What appeals to you about the aesthetics of the, uh, of the photos? There's a, um, what seems to unite them, is, is in, in, in my opinion, is the a very, a very still quality to them, a very direct quality to them. Uh, all of your subjects look right at the camera. Um, what, what aesthetic effect are you trying to achieve? Um, you know, to tell the truth, I, I don't go with anything premeditated. But when I start taking pictures, these are just the way that I take pictures. Um, I think. I love the snapshot. I love pictures. I love looking at black and white pictures of, from people's families' albums. I mean, those are the most the warm and heartening and direct and, and believable f uses of phot photography. Even though I don't do that with the, my own particular smaller family, I, I do that with the family in the larger sense. There's a, uh, the next photo is... Uh is almost like a family snapshot in, uh, in that sense. Now, these are four little girls. Uh, this, this picture has a lot of sort of, kind of sets the experience, the Afro-American experience within the social construct, whether it be Mexico. You mean because the doll is white? Yeah. You're relating to, they're relating to something who, which they obviously love, which which may or may not prove to be quite, you know, harmful to their life later on. Um, there are four young girls who, who I found sitting there playing with their dolls and who I kind of cajoled into looking at me so we could do the photograph. Um, this is called Las Muñecas. Which means? The dolls. But all, all of them being dolls. Um, and... Um, I do pictures for my own kind of personal reasons, but I, um, all, all the, and, and at times which I'm not really clear of, um, when I see them all together, I realize that there was a method. And I think it's for people to, for me, it's for people to go look at them, to, f to look beyond what the, just simply the obvious is. Are you surprised, uh, you told me you were surprised at the reaction uh, to your photographs and the reaction to the exhibit in Los Angeles. It's going elsewhere, I understand, right? Yes, it's, it's, uh, it'll be in Los Angeles at the Watts Towers Art Center until 
uh, the 30th of March, and then uh, the exhibit will open at the Schoenberg at the New York Public Library, uh, the Schoenberg Center in Harlem. And the Schoenberg um, actually purchased part of the photographs for their, uh, their, their archive collection. What, uh, what struck you about the reaction? Um, you know, I think the reaction, I, I sort of took the reaction on a personal level because for a long time I had sort of felt that I was hiding out in Mexico taking pictures of things that were important to me and maybe not important to anyone else. And, you know, I never really had any money and, like, nobody called. And, and I hadn't finished this project. I'd let this project drag on and drag on and drag on. Uh, and finally my friend said, listen, get off the dime. Go finish this thing, you know. And, and I did it. And I brought it back. And I, w I was gratified by the way the work looked. I spent six months doing the work. And now, like, I, I wouldn't say I'm a star, but, like, I get 40 calls a day at my studio. I mean, I had to move my studio out of my loft. You know, I, I had to put some distance. Are you going to go back to Mexico? Uh, I'm going to go back because I'm going to work with the priest in this area to do a series of illustrated psalms that he wants to use uh, for the Catholic Church. And there's more work. I thought I was done with this project, but I realize I think I've just started. Okay. Tony Gleaton, thanks for uh, being with us. Good luck. Nightwatch will be back in a moment.